Selling Coffee Today, a talk show produced by First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Mississippi. I'm your host, Jennifer Walker, and I'm so happy to introduce to you my guest host today is my sister, Rebecca. Rebecca Turner, who uh, moved to Colorado last year, and we're so glad she's visiting down south for a week, and she was able to come and tape some segments with us. So, Rebecca, I'm so glad. Thank you for doing the show. We've been wanting Thank to do you. this for a while, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> well, I asked Rebecca to uh, come and be with us for a couple of segments, and we're going to talk about several different topics. But uh, today, we're going to introduce our topic by our sis the sister cup she gave me last year. And uh, we, we won't do the routine for you, but we have a little song routines we do about sisters. and Chopsticks. Have, yes, we can sing chopsticks. <laughs> we might do that if we have time at the end of the program. Um, but we having a sister is, is just a special gift from God. And I know that um, it's like having a built-in best friend. And though mm -hmm. I am six years older than Rebecca, we've always been just dear friends. Mm -hmm. But for people who don't have a sister, having sisters in Christ is the next best thing. But um, I'm very thankful God gave me a sister. We have a me brother too. in between. <laughs> and I don't know if I'll ever get him to come and be you on try. the show. Keep I'll trying. Try. <laughs> well, I asked Rebecca to come and to share with us for this episode about just obedience and God's faithfulness. God has, uh, God called her family to leave us, to move away from the South and to go far away from um, everybody that was her stabilizing support system and uh, to move all the way out to the beautiful area of uh, the Denver, Colorado Springs area in Colorado. And I just asked her to come and just share about her, her testimony of obedience and God's faithfulness. God might not be asking you to move somewhere, um, but he might be asking you to do something that seems almost just as difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, there is always blessings that come from obedience. Mm -hmm. And so Rebecca, tell us about the process that God took you all through. Well, about a year and a half ago, um, my husband had the job opportunity to move to Colorado. And of course, my initial reaction was, no, I would never want to move away from my family. Um, his family was um, in Alabama where we were living at the time and my family was Mississippi. And so my first reaction was no, but I knew that I had to at least give God the opportunity to direct me and to pray about it. And as we prayed about God's direction for our lives, we felt pulled and it was really amazing because so many things happened where God just cut our heartstrings from Alabama and kept drawing us to Colorado. And um, it was really interesting. I was uh, having my quiet time um, one morning and I was um, came across this verse and I'd read it so many times, heard so many different sermons on it, but then the Lord just spoke to me in a different way. And the, the verse is actually talking about rebuilding of the temple. And it's from um, Haggai 2, 9, and it says, The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former, says the Lord. In this house, I will grant peace. And I just really felt like the Lord said, You think you have it so great now, but in obedience and in following what I tell you to do, I will grant peace. And so um, we made the decision to move. And it was very, very difficult. My family had a very hard time with it. I think if I didn't have children, they wouldn't have as difficult a time with me <laughs> leaving. Um, she has three beautiful children that we just adore and love so much. And we, we're just sick not to see them. But FaceTime yes. helps us. We talk a lot on FaceTime and visit that, that way now. That makes a big difference. So um, we were obedient. And um, a week before we left, the Lord speaks to me a lot through music, and I think music is just a wonderful way of worship and ministry. And there's a song by FFH, and it's called um, What It Feels Like to Be Led. And I want to share with you the verse. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I was driving. Um, I was leaving to go to Texas for an event, and this song came on the radio, and I know the Lord put it there for me at that moment to... Um, to just encourage me through the process, but it's called What It Feels Like to Be Led. And um, one of the verses, the, the third verse says, so this is what it feels like to just walk away from everything I thought would keep me safe, to depend just on you for every meal and find that it's better this way. Oh, it's better this way. This may not be the road I would choose for me, but it still feels right somehow. 
because I've never felt you as close to me as I do right now. So this is what it feels like to be led. And even in this warm room that we're recording in, I get <laughs> chill bumps just thinking about it because that is so what happens when we follow the Lord and we leave everything that we feel comfortable and safe. We never feel closer to him than when we are really following him and we are being led by him. That's right. And we never need him more. That's right. Than when mm-hmm. we don't know what's going to happen in the future and we're dependent on him. Uh, and he, he just is so much more real to us and, and we grow much closer that way. Absolutely. Well, tell us, um, so you, so you led, you went out and I know that, um, in our testimony of moving to Cleveland, and I know you all use this verse too, about being like Abraham, that by mm-hmm. faith you, uh, in fact, this is in Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 8, that says, urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place um, that he was destined to receive an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was mm-hmm. to go. And so, uh, and then and then we see, if, if we study the scriptures and we we see how God blessed Abraham for his obedience and through his obedience, not just for it, but through it. Uh, It was not always easy on Abraham. And I cannot imagine being Abraham's wife and him coming home one day and saying, we've got to move and I don't know where we're going, but pack up the tent. We're just going to go. That's right. But there were blessings all along the way. So tell us some of the blessings that just in one year's time, you have seen God do through this move? It has been amazing. Um, I love where we live now. And I think truly when you follow God, he will give you that love wherever it is that he calls you to go. You will have that love. Um, Goodness, besides just the beauty of the area and the to see the look out our window and see a, a herd of deer feeding at dusk, you know, the mountains where scripture has never come alive to me like it has when I moved to Colorado. I think of the verse, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move and it will move. Well, we hear that, but in the South, we have nothing to compare it to. (laughs) But when you live where we live now, we see these ginormous, (laughs) is that even a word? Ginormous (laughs) mountains. And to think if we have faith, we can move that. Um, The town I live in has this huge rock. It's actually called Castle Rock. And there's this big rock on top of the mountain. Now think of the scripture that says, if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Mm. And it's just... And they do, don't they? Yes, (laughs) they do. It's just amazing to see. Um, But then there have been many other blessings. You know, just the opportunity to teach our children that we are missionaries wherever we go, we are missionaries to share the light of Jesus. Um, But something that our whole family rejoices in, Mm. and now they don't regret that we (laughs) moved. (laughs) Um, Our daughter um, last February um, had an ear infection, which is normal for children. She was six years old, and um, it was on the weekend, so we went into a walk-in clinic. and just to, we knew she had an earache, needed to get some antibiotics or something. And the doctor there found that she had a heart murmur. And we never knew that. Um, she'd been under great, great physician cares in the past, but uh, they did locate the heart murmur. Long story short, she had heart surgery in April and um, found out that one and a half times the blood flow was going into her lungs as was reaching in her aorta. And that over time, if we had not found this, um, she could have had a stroke. It would have caused scarring in the lungs where she could not breathe. She could have very well been one of these athletic teenagers who just dropped dead Mm. playing sports. Or later in life when she went to have babies, it could kill her. So we thought that we moved for my husband's job. But what we really know now is God called us to move to save her life. Because it, the altitude put stress on her heart that she did not not have here, right? Mm-hmm. And so they were able to hear that there, mm-hmm. that down, down, down in the south, south. <laughs> you didn't, uh, none of that stress was on her heart that way. That's right. Yes. And so I think so many times, if we were not obedient, if we had stayed in our comfort zone, if we had stayed where it was easy, if we had followed what even people we loved and respected so much, if we followed what they wanted us to do and followed what they said, rather than following what Jesus was leading us to do, 
how different our life could mm, be. Mm, that's so true. And that makes us happy that they moved out there, but now they can come back, see? Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, beginning another year, God has other things that he, right. will, he will unfold. Anything mm -hmm. else you wanna tell us about that? Um, she is doing very well, she's thriving. Um, she goes in for her six month checkup this month and the doctors say that she will not have any problems the rest of her life. So, because it was called early on, so praise we God. We praise God mm -hmm. for that. You know, in Hebrews 11, the whole chapter is about people who um, obeyed the Lord when it was not the popular thing to do. And I'm, I'm guilty, I am, I admit, I did not want you all to move out there. I was thinking of my selfishness about what I, how I would miss your lives, how um, our mom would miss your lives, how we would miss all the times that we used to get together as a family. But God has provided those times, you know, mm -hmm. and through technology, we have been able to visit more and it's not been like it used to be. And I know that this is no big deal for a whole lot of people That's that are right. watching us. But for us, it was a big deal for you all to leave and go so far away where we couldn't drive and get to you in one day. And mm -hmm. so that's, um, but, I was thinking as we were talking about you sharing just some of the blessings of obedience, the, the whole of Hebrews 11 is about person after person who stepped out of their comfort zone and obeyed God when other people didn't think they should, thought they were crazy or, mm -hmm. you know, didn't want them to. Um, but verse six in Hebrews 11 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's something I remember. That was one of the first scripture verses I learned um, when I was a little girl learning a list of important scriptures to know that one without faith, it's impossible to please him. And you all pleased him because in faith you took a step and obeyed him and you're seeing the rewards, but we don't always get to see big, big dividends like that. In fact, at the back of Hebrews chapter 11, at the very last two verses, um, it talks about the people who won, verses 39 and 40, it says that they won divine approval by means of their faith, but they did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us so that these heroes and heroines of the faith should not come to perfection apart from us. And what this says to me, and I, I really clung to this for those years that um, we were praying for the Lord to heal me. And I was sick and didn't think that I would, I thought that I would just be healed in heaven, um, that I might not get my answer right now. I, my husband and I stepped out in obedience and surrendered to ministry and everything didn't go like we wanted it to go. But um, God had it, has a purpose in mind for that as well. You know, um, it's not necessarily for us, but it's for the people watching our lives. So some of these people in the scripture did not receive their their benefit or their blessing or their why. Or their inheritance or any of that. Yeah, until they got to heaven. But it was so that we would look at their lives and say, but they obeyed anyway. Mm -hmm. And they are blessed anyway. And there are times that God calls us to do things and the blessing comes, but not for many, many, many years That's right. down the road. But yet we have to be faithful. And even when we don't understand the circumstances, we have to trust our Father. We have to trust God. And even though this doesn't make sense, I know who has the master plan and just stay strong, just continue to walk the path and he will complete it. That's right. And, and Rebecca has made friends from just almost day one and <laughs> living in Colorado. So tell us how, what has been your attitude about this life change, this move, um, this whole area change? It's different from the South. It's different from what you knew. So how did you, um, how have you made so many friends? <laughs> Well, my children and my husband laugh at me because, you know, I'll go into a restroom at a restaurant and come out and say, I met a new friend. <laughs> um, but truly, I think a lot of it has to do with attitude, mm -hmm. you know, um, that with the attitude of thinking, our granddaddy used to say that a stranger is just a friend you hadn't met yet. That's you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, because it is a different um, a different culture there than the Bible Belt and just Deep South. Um, I and I was very pleasantly surprised that the South is not the only place that has friendly people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're very friendly. Um, but I'm, you know, doing different things, getting involved in, of course, finding a church. That was the the first place of trying to make friends is in church. And then, um, you know, people in the neighborhood. 
you have to kind of get out of yourself. Quit expecting everyone to come to you mm -hmm. and you go and say, hi, I haven't met you. I'm new here. My name's Rebecca, you know, things like that. Um, because in the world we live in today, people could drive into their driveways, close their garage doors, go in their houses, stay all you night. Never see them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come back out, get in the car while the dri the garage door's closed, open the door back out, and and that mm -hmm. is the extent of it. Yes, exactly. So, so you really have to make an effort um, to to see people who may have needs that you can minister to or something that um, I'm doing this winter. I think I've shared this mm -hmm. with you. Tell us about um, that. <clears throat> the Project Christmas Child. Operation, Operation Christmas, Child. Christmas Child. Um You can go on the website and um, order a party packing kit. And um, you can get the DVD to go with it. You can get all this stuff. And so I'm making these flyers and giving them, passing them out in our neighborhood. And I'm going to pick a date and have the neighbors really come fun. to my home and pack these shoe boxes and then we'll track them and then the shoe boxes will go overseas to children who um, are not as fortunate and don't have the opportunity to get gifts for Christmas. Um, but I'm really excited about that because um, it'll give an opportunity to meet more neighbors but also just to share the love of Jesus with um, so many people who don't know Jesus and um, so that will be not only a great opportunity to meet our neighbors but for the children in our society who have so much, mm -hmm. to be aware of so many people who have so little and again, to get out of ourselves and to put mm -hmm. in to others. So oh, that's a great idea. I had not heard about that until you um, you told us. All right, I know that's sponsored by Samaritan's Purse, but do you mm -hmm. go to SamaritansPurse.org, I'm sure? Yeah, or? that's what I did. I just went to their website and then you'll see um, a little airplane like out of a shoe uh -huh, box uh -huh. and click on that and it gives you all the information about how to have a party packing. That's really um, cool. And you can, even if you know your neighbors, it's still something really mm -hmm. a great thing to do to get the community together and to make a difference for other people. Mm -hmm. We are packing shoe boxes here at this church as well as many churches in the area. We're a collection site for for shoe boxes, but I think it's really fun to do it as a as a neighborhood because most of the people that you live around aren't going to go to church and aren't mm -hmm. going to pack a shoe box. And even if you don't sit them down with the Bible that day, mm -hmm. they are in your home and they have an opportunity to see you interact with your family and see what you have on your walls, you know, mm -hmm. what scripture verses are on your refrigerator or whatever. They have an, an opportunity to observe. That's right. That you um, are living what you so that one day when you do tell them about Jesus, they'll see that you live it's what you say. It's not a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's a wonderful idea. Oh, well, great. Well, we <laughs> wish God would move you back to the South, but since, uh, to, not just to the South, but to our area, I want them to come move to Cleveland. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't think that that's going to happen. But um, anyway, God is using you all for sure where you, you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for everybody listening to this, I mean, it is no accident that each of us is right where we are for this very moment. And God um, calls each of us to step out in faith and obey him. I was listening to something just this morning. I was listening to a Nancy Lee DeMoss podcast and she was talking about that, uh, and, and along with this verse that without faith, it's impossible to please God without obedience to that faith. I mean, we, obedience is an outcome of our faith in God. If we are really trusting the Lord, really, really trusting him, then the natural outcome is going to be obedience. And without obedience, we can't please him. We don't even show him that we love him unless we really obey him. And can I interject sure. just that um, delayed obedience is disobedience. That's what you know, we teach when, our when children. When we tell our children, yep. come here now, and they don't, they're disobeying, even if they're going to come in five minutes. That's right. And it's the same thing with what the Lord calls us. Delayed obedience is actually disobedience. So when he calls you go immediately. That's right. And there will always be blessings. That's, right. That's what Nancy Lee DeMoss was saying, that blessings always follow obedience, mm -hmm. always. And so thank you for that encouragement today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to close in a prayer. Um, would you like to pray for our our viewers as uh, we always have a closing prayer? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't mean to take you by surprise, oh, but fine. pray for them <laughs> because I know that someone listening is struggling with obeying. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I mean, you get back, get out Hebrews 11 and look through it and see the things that people did by faith 
They obeyed by faith. They suffered by faith. They moved by faith. They were prompted by faith to go against their culture, to do things that were big. And then they were prompted to do things that, you know, were, might have even been normal for them. Um, but whatever it is that God's asking us to do by faith, we've got to do it. And I know that he is asking someone who's listening to this to do something, to step out in obedience. And so would you pray for them sure. to do that? Okay. Absolutely. Dear Jesus, we just thank you that you are faithful. You are so faithful even when we are not faithful and you never give up on us. Thank you that you are a God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. Lord, I pray that you would help us all to be obedient to your calling for us not to give you delayed obedience. Help us to realize that obedience is not always easy, but it does always, um, it's always followed by blessings. And Lord, I just ask that you would um, be with every watcher, that you would touch their heart in a special way and ours as well. Show us areas of our lives where you are calling us um, to be obedient and maybe we're fighting it. Lord, just make us aware of that and help us just to raise our hands and surrender and to follow what you called us to do. Help us to be obedient. We love you so much, Jesus, and let us be a light so that other people can see you in us. And in your holy and precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, Rebecca will be joining us for a few other episodes. She has a website that you can visit her. Tell them your website. My website is www.maryk.com slash rturner and then the number one. Um, so you can check me out there. Yes. And uh, you can keep up with what's going on at First Baptist Cleveland at understhesteeple.com. And you can also go back and listen to sermon downloads and, and uh, to, to old past sermons and to past smelling coffee episodes as well at this site. And as always, I would love for you to visit uh, with me at my site, smellingcoffee.com, where we uh, seek the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in every place. 